Okay. So I feel like this video is long overdue. Um, those of you that have been following me for a while now, at least all of 2022, you know um, how much body dysmorphia affected everything in my life. Um, I associate my body dysmorphia with my anxiety because my anxiety, I don't know if it was triggered or it just decided that I was feeling all these emotions over my body dysmorphia already that it kind of decided to like, all right, let's come out. Now that your body dysmorphia fucked, then let's fuck you up with anxiety too, you know? <laughs> so, ever since I got better about my body dysmorphia, um, I get asked, um, how did you get over it? Or how did you deal with it? The truth is, I'm not over it. Um, I'm actually looking at myself right now and I feel like a piece of shit. Um, but I have dealt with it. Um, so I kind of just want to talk about like, just, I guess how I dealt with it but more so like, I just want to talk about my body dysmorphia, okay? <laughs> um, so the first thing, um, time frame for those of you that don't know or are new here, whatever the fuck. Um, I competed in September of 2021 and I was 97 pounds stage weight. Um, I was a stick, a literal stick. Um, I'm 27 years old, so being 97 pounds is ridiculous. Um, I gained 10 pounds in a week after my show, which, you know, could be bad, but considering I was 97 pounds, going up to 107 when my average weight before bodybuilding was 110 i think it's okay right but going from an entire year which was 2021 of prep and bringing my body down and then gaining 10 pounds in a week was insane um Following that, I I made it to like 127, 130, which is kind of, I've been between 125 and 130 for the last year. Um, but the, one of the things that I noticed as I went into my own off season was my fellow bodybuilder friends that were in their off season as well, um, they were posting on social media, but they were posting like transformations from before prep to prep or videos from their show and like videos from when they were on prep. None of them were posting what their current physique was. And I've heard, I mean, it's my first like actual year as a bodybuilder. Like I've been working out for a while, but 2021 like was my first official bodybuilding year and I did a prep. So this was like my second year and I was in off season. So like I knew that like you get fat in the off season kind of thing was the thing, right? So I'd like, I understood it, right? Um, but it was wild how like, I never noticed that they didn't post their physiques or anything current for that matter. Uh, so that was like, okay, I guess we don't do that. So I decided to, um, because although gaining weight sucked, it's normal. And 
I choose to be very careful when I say that or how I say that because I don't want to give off that impression that it's okay to gain like 50 pounds and be an overweight, overweight, obese fuck, you know, like that's not what I mean when I say gaining weight is okay because I mean, being 97 pounds is unhealthy as fuck. But being, I don't know, if I was 180 pounds, I'm 4'11". Like, that'd be overweight and obese and unhealthy as fuck. Like, when I say gaining weight, I mean gaining healthy weight. Um, I am 125 pounds right now. And, like, that's healthy. I'm healthy right now. So, yes, I gained 30 pounds in, like, three or four months, which at the time wasn't all that, but I'm not fat and obese. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, I just, I choose, one of the reasons I didn't talk about this sooner is because it's so difficult with like the whole body positive community and all that stuff going around that I don't want this to be interpreted in a way of like, it's okay to be obese and overweight because it's not okay. I understand that there's people that are like heavier. I understand that, but you can do something about it. You know, like, so I don't want to trigger the whole like body positive stuff. Like it's okay to be overweight. Like, no, it's not okay because it's not healthy. But anyway, that's, <laughs> that's going into something else. And that's one of the reasons why I like avoided talking about this subject because it's so difficult not to merge the two when I am so happy that I gained 30 pounds, you know? But yeah, so it like, this whole body dysmorphia, how I like chose to talk about it or why I chose to talk about it. One of the main things was because I noticed that bodybuilders weren't posting their off-season bodies. And I was like, what the fuck? You know, like, what do you look like? I want to understand why my body looks the way it does. So I'm looking to my fellow bodybuilding friends and I'm not seeing it, right? So that kind of brings me to the second point of how I managed to deal with it um as you guys know i own exhale negative along with my roommate brick wall um, and brick wall also happens to be a videographer and photographer so with the brand we do a lot of photo shoots and video shoots and all that fun stuff we get new product and we have to shoot it um so it's kind of a part of the job to be in front of the camera, you know? So I was, <clears throat> I don't want to say forced because forced seems like a very harsh word. Um, but let's just go with that word without it having that negative connotation of doing something I don't want to do. Um, but I was, I had to do the photo shoots. I had to be in the video shoots because it's part of the job. It's how we showcase exhale negative. Um, so for the most part, like I felt like shit during the photo shoots, especially when I was in a shoot with someone that was on prep or not that deep into off season like I was, but Looking back at those shoots now, I'm kind of grateful that like I said, well, whatever, I have to do the photo shoot anyway, so I'm going to do it because now I see, I can see the difference from then until now. And even like a month after, like two weeks after, like you can see the difference in how my body has changed or it changed, you know? So there was... There was one photo shoot where I I stepped out of it because I was with two um, wellness competitors and they looked phenomenal. And I remember looking at them and then 
I looked at them, right? They were getting ready for the shoot. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go change. And I went into the bathroom. The bathroom had a wall of, um, it was a wall mirror. So the entire wall, huge mirror. So I was wearing a hoodie. And I remember taking off the hoodie. And I looked at myself in the mirror. <laughs> and I was like, you look gross. I remember... I turned around to the side to like look at my stomach and I was like, you're gonna go out there next to them looking like that? Are you crazy? You're joking, right? You look like shit. I remember that day so clearly. I remember I walked out of the bathroom and I ran to hug one of the girls and I just like hugged her and I started to cry. And thinking about it now, I don't know if it was so much that like I felt fat. I know that had something to do with it, but also both of them grown as competitors and I looked up to them and I did not look anything like them. And I'm thinking to myself, like, I'm supposed to compete against them. And I look like shit. And that was the first time, first and only time that I stepped out of a photo shoot because of my body dysmorphia. And I missed out on working out at a pretty cool fucking gym. Um, I hung out and it was fun and stuff and like, but still like it was, I let my body dysmorphia ruin that trip. We drove four hours to go to that gym. And I literally drove there and hung out and came back because my body dysmorphia said, fuck you. So that was the only shoot that like I struggled with. Um, other than that, I did all the shoots. Um, some of the shoots I managed to keep a t-shirt on. Um, others, you know, I would not eat um, like a big, my big meal before because I didn't want to be fat or I'd be like, oh no, let's do it early in the morning before I have to eat so that like I'm not fat, you know? So it, I, I found ways around it and like now it's just, now it's fine. Now I have all this incredible footage from January to now where you can see the changes in my body, but Photo shoots. I know, I know it's difficult. I know it's, it's hard to look at yourself in the mirror, much harder to look at yourself in front of a camera or your phone or whatever it is that you choose to take photos with. But it's so important. It's so important because I look at myself now, like now, December, 2022, I look at February, 2022 D and I think to myself, what the fuck were you thinking? Why were you talking to yourself like that? You look incredible. I look much better now, yes, but I did not look like shit. But till that, to February 2022, D, she would look at herself and be disgusted. I remember... Um, in my check-ins with my coach, I would tell him about how I felt. And I mean, he would tell me like, it's still engraved in my head. He said, love yourself at every stage. And that was the hardest thing to do when, you know, I looked at myself shredded and lean and this perfect body for so long. For an entire year and suddenly I'm not and I think a big 
big part of it had to do with social media. And I mean, it's a big reason why everybody goes through this stuff, you know, but I thought about um, the people I looked up to at the time, the social media influencers that, you know, influenced me to do bodybuilding. And they were always like in shape. Uh, so they were the fit people. And I kind of sort of became that person, you know, because I documented my prep. And when I gained weight, it felt as if I was no longer that fit person because I didn't look it anymore, or at least not in my eyes. And so many people reached out to me during prep about like, you're so motivating, your results are incredible, blah, blah, blah. So in my head, the motivation came from dropping the weight, dropping the fat. And when I went the opposite direction, it was like, shit, I'm no longer who they think I am. Like, I'm just this fat person. Like, I'm no longer a fit chick. I'm not gonna motivate anybody anymore. Or at least that's what I thought. Because I thought that the motivation that I was giving off was because I dropped the fat. When in reality, now in hindsight, looking at it, as those messages are still rolling over, it's about what, I, what I'm willing to do to get to where I need to be. And it just so happens to be through bodybuilding. But, you know, when I was on prep, I was willing to do whatever it fucking took to get on that stage looking fucking phenomenal, right? And now in the off season, I'm still willing to do whatever it fucking takes to get on that stage looking phenomenal. You know, it's just different. So, yeah, social media had... But it, it's not so much that I was, like, looking at other people like, ugh, I wish I looked like them. It was more so, like, I didn't feel like I looked like me. I didn't feel like I was me anymore. And that was... That was one of the, the factors. Like, I, I didn't want to post... But, you know, I was doing the photo shoots for Exhale Negative and I was like, all right, I have the photos. I'm going to post it. I'm, I'm not going to let this content go to waste. And with every post, there was something. I, I remember a photo that Brickwall took of me. It was, it was in October. It was like a month after my show. And uh, I'm sitting down and like you can see kind of little rolls. Cause I'm like, I'm kind of like this and I'm laughing and he looked at me and he's like, you're not going to like this photo. And I looked at it and I was like, it's me. And when I was on prep, there was another photo where my eye bags are gross. Like I look like death. And he said the same thing to me. And I was like, it's me. And that's when I just accepted like this is who I am I'm gonna show who I am regardless of what it looks like because I want to be real I want to be authentic I want to show hey look I'm not fucking shredded 24 7 and that's normal so I feel like I kind of went off on a huge tangent here <laughs> but photo shoots, right? Photo shoots were a big, big game changer as far as like dealing with it. I didn't really have a choice, but you know, it's awesome that I didn't have that choice because there's so much documentation of my off season and it's awesome. Um, another thing that, um, helped me is my why so like I mentioned I was 97 pounds 
the day of my show and I competed in wellness and I was way, way too small for wellness. So the day of my show, uh, my coach and I talked and um, he said, you know, you're too small. And I said, yes, like it's fucking obvious, right? And I looked at the girl that took the overall and she was incredibly massive. And that day, my coach told me like, hey, you're going to have to take a two to three year off season in order for you to build. And of course, at the time, it seemed crazy. Like, how am I going to take two to three years off the stage? Like, that's wild. But, you know, a year later, I'm just like, all right, cool, let's take another year off. But anyway, the, the whole thing with that is I want to be a wellness competitor. I want to be a, I want, not only do I want to be a wellness competitor, I want to look like a wellness competitor. So in order for me to do that, I had to gain weight. I had to build my body from nothing, 97 pounds, to wherever the fuck we're gonna end up. I have to. There's no if, ands, or buts. If I want to be a wellness competitor, I have to gain weight. And that's what I told myself all the time. Um, I told myself like, if you want to compete in bikini, sure, then fucking worry about it. Worry about gaining weight. Because you shouldn't. You should be skinny. Or not skinny anymore, but you, you know what I'm trying to say. And maybe that would have been easier. You know, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I'm not a bikini competitor. I don't know how it works. But I don't want to be a bikini competitor. I want to be a wellness competitor. And I dream about it. It is my dream to step on that fucking stage looking like a wellness competitor. And in order to do that, I had to go through this phase of being bigger than I've ever been in my entire life. And that's something that I had to keep reminding myself because it sucks. <laughs> it sucks to not feel good about your body. But I kept reminding myself that this is necessary. This has to get done if I want to win. And my desire to win is through the fucking roof. So I did anyway. I did what I had to do. Which brings me to the next point. The whole, I've, I've had conversations with other bodybuilders that um, starve themselves after um, a prep because of their body dysmorphia, because they're gaining weight, because they feel you know, like they're eating too much and they need to stop. <clears throat> so one thing that I am very proud of myself for doing is never doing that. I ate what I had to eat, even if I didn't want it, because just like on prep, you eat what you have to eat because that's how you win. Same shit in the off season. I ate what I had to eat because that's what I needed to eat in order to win. Like I said, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. It's what has to get done. And I know that like in the off season, it's the biggest thing I think is of course, like you have this freedom of like, this food freedom per se. So, yeah, you'll have the cookies, you'll have all that crap. You know, all the crap food that you didn't have for as long as you were on prep. So it's very, 
it's very tempting. It's very difficult to like, you know, there's no show date, so I can have, you know, a whole box of pizza or whatever the fuck, you know? It's it's very easy to fall into that. So a trick, I guess, um, if you guys care, but a trick that, you know, at the time when I first started my off season, it was um, my diet was I had a structured cheat meal on Thursdays and then a, it was more like a refeed on Thursdays and then a whatever the fuck you want on Sundays. Um, so that was a cheat meal. And I feel like my coach added that in to my diet, not so much because, you know, I needed it to gain weight, but more so because, you know, we want these things. We want the crap food after a show. We want to eat the junk food. So I'm very, I'm very like, I need you to tell me what to do. And I'm, if you tell me what to do, I'm going to do it kind of person, at least with my coach. Um, so if he told me, hey, have a burger, a burrito or sushi on Thursdays and then have pizza and whatever treat you want on Sundays, then that's what I was going to do. So that's what I did. So I didn't have any food in the house that um, wasn't in my diet. Um, I did order like brownies and cookies and stuff after my show, but I froze them. So they were frozen. And Saturday night, uh, we'd take one out and thaw it. And then Sunday, I would go through my day. And then when it was time for my cheat meal, I'd have usually pizza or whatever the fuck we decided for that day. And then we'd have the brownie. So it was very, it was just very, I'm, I'm just very disciplined. I, I know it's not the case for everybody, but the whole freezing the stuff, not having it readily accessible to just eat whenever was awesome. Um, it was very inconvenient to try to thaw it out like now and then try to eat it tonight, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it's just, I guess for me, I'm just very disciplined in general and <laughs> I'm just a little bit scared of my coach, just a little bit. I love him to death, but I'm like, teeny tiny bit terrified of him so like I I didn't want to disappoint him I didn't want to do something that I wasn't supposed to do so I just did whatever I was told and then obviously I was still checking in every week like every week I didn't stop checking in so I didn't want I didn't want to get that message of like hey you got fat you know I knew or at least I thought that I was fat so I didn't need him to tell me that too um, I, I went through like pretty bad stages in which I remember like, um, brick wall telling me that I really had to think about whether bodybuilding was something that I wanted to do or not because bodybuilding was taking over my life as far as and not in a good way it was taking over my life and like i was hurting i was sad i was depressed i hated myself and i remember telling him like bodybuilding is the only thing that i have control over because i can control like what i eat and like it's the only thing that's structured in my life and blah 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 and he was like, bodybuilding is controlling you because you're unhappy. And it's true. I was. I was very unhappy. It might have had something to do with other things too, but, you know, the body dysmorphia was just taking over my life and making it so that I just hated I hated looking at myself. I hated... It got to the point where I would purposely get naked before the shower, walk to my full body mirror, and just stare at myself. Just stare at myself. I 
hated what I looked like. I hated looking at myself. But I was like, how else am I going to accept that this is what my body is doing right now? If I just have blinders on thinking like I don't have anything, you know, like that's not, it's not the case. Like, this is what I look like. Accept it or stop bodybuilding. <laughs> and I wasn't going to stop bodybuilding. So I didn't. have little note here because I felt like I was just going to go all over the place and I still am still all over the place. Um, so then another thing that I kind of did to like help was I found different ways to make myself feel better or to sway my eyes from this and looking elsewhere. So I know this is gonna sound pretty fucking lame, but I got eyelash extensions. <laughs> and my eyelash extensions became so dominant in my look that I stopped looking at the rest of my body as like just negative shit because there was something pretty fucking amazing in front of my face. And <laughs> as gay as this is gonna sound, like they make me feel fucking powerful. And I'm not saying, hey, go get eyelash extensions and you're gonna feel automatically better. <laughs> that's, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is find something, find something other than, I don't want to say physical appearance because my lashes are physical appearance, but something that makes you happy, something that makes you feel good. Like eyelashes make me feel good. Um, I recently started wearing hoop earrings because they make me feel sexy. It's little things. I even, um, I got acrylics for a while and I was getting like my nails done and stuff because I felt, it felt good. So it, it swayed my mind. It, it, whenever I looked at myself, I just thought negative thoughts all the time. So when I got eyelash extensions, I got my nails done, when I started wearing hoop earrings, I started realizing that like I looked good. Like I was looking at my face and it looked good and I'm like, okay. That looks good. That makes me feel good. And it, it helped. I mean, I don't know, do your makeup, do your hair, like... I don't know how this applies to guys. I don't know if guys are watching this, but... Something that makes you feel good. Because when you're deep into body dysmorphia, nothing makes you feel good. Working out doesn't make you feel good. Eating healthy doesn't make you feel good because you're fat because of it. <laughs> That's what your head is telling you. So yeah, that was another thing I did. And then come May of 2022, uh, my coach changed my diet into what he called an insulin resuscitation diet. Um, I don't know what that means. <laughs> but based on what my body has done since then, it, it was like a body recomposition type thing because I weigh the exact same as I did at the time now, but I look completely different. So, um, one of the hardest things, I wanna say with everybody that like is in a fitness journey or whatever, is not seeing the results. Um, so I told my coach like, you know, when I was on prep, like I was doing the work, I was eating what I was supposed to and like I was losing the fat and you can see the muscles and blah, blah, blah. But now with the excess body fat in my body, like, 
I don't know if what I'm doing is working because I can't see it. Like, am I really building muscle or am I just fat? You know? So that goes for pretty much everybody. Like, especially like the people that start going to the gym, like they give up because they don't see the results. So I went from September to May. So that is eight months. Eight months of hating my body. Eight months of not seeing the results, but still doing what I needed to do. That's a long time. <laughs> That's almost an entire year of just hating, looking at myself. That's crazy. <laughs> but I didn't stop, I didn't give up because I know, I know what I want and I know what I want to accomplish in bodybuilding. So I kept doing it, even if it meant I would feel like shit about it. Um, so after we got into that new diet, my body, I basically like dropped body fat, but stayed the same weight. So I was gaining muscle too and like, then the line started showing like you know you can see you can see my muscles now and it's pretty fucking awesome <laughs> um so that that's kind of when everything changed as far as my body dysmorphia goes um in may we also moved to this new house so I started training at Metroflex and Metroflex doesn't have an AC so it was in the nick of summer and um, you know everyone's training like in sports bras or shirtless because it's hot as a motherfucker in there and I was wearing t-shirts because I felt fat and it got to the point where it just it was too hot and I was like all right I'm taking off my shirt because it's too fucking hot to have a shirt on. And I started training with a sports bra, even though I didn't feel sports bra worthy. And it was awesome because then I just, I started to like it because I would get really sweaty and I would get this really sick pump and then you could kind of see the lines and then my diet had changed. So I started dropping body fat and like, then it got better. I got better. Um, and yeah, that's, that's kind of, that's it. I went through it for a very long time, but there's always, there was always like a why, you know, and little things that helped and now um one last story i guess before i sign off here but in april um, one of our affiliates for exile negative was on prep and brickwall was shooting her like a lot and i remember him saying like it was really it was really nice to have someone who was like in shape to shoot for the brand. And he didn't say it like, oh, you're not in shape. You know, like it wasn't like that. It was just, I mean, I wasn't really, but I also didn't feel comfortable enough to like, yeah, let's do a shoot whenever, you know? So I told him the other day, like maybe a couple weeks ago, like, you know, it's pretty fucking cool that like, I am, that person in shape now that you can shoot whenever even though I'm not on prep I'm in pretty good fucking shape and you can fucking see it now and there was a lot of emotion when I said it at the time <laughs> but body dysmorphia is hard 
it's a bitch. <laughs> it is the biggest bitch on the planet and it can take over your life. <laughs> Um, and I don't expect my story or my, the things that I did to help or that I do to help me, to help you or to help anybody, because I understand that when you're so deep into it, you don't give a fuck what anybody has to say. <laughs> like... You don't care if people think you look phenomenal. You don't care if people are like, oh, but you looked worse before. You lost a lot of weight already or whatever it is. You don't care because you're fat. <laughs> you're not, but that's what you tell yourself. I remember people telling me, you look fine. Like, no the fuck I don't. I don't look fine. I'm fat. My clothes doesn't fit me. When you're so deep into it, you don't want to hear it. And I get that. Because I didn't want to hear it. I said, man, fuck you. Like, no, I'm fat. <laughs> but when you really want something, you're going to do it. You do it no matter what. For me, in this case, bodybuilding is everything. Being a wellness competitor is everything. And I'm gonna do whatever it takes. Um, I don't know what's in store for 2023. Find out next week. But for now, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, me talking about my body dysmorphia. Um, I, I wanted to do a full video because I knew that there was a lot that needed to be said and I still feel like I didn't say everything. Um, I could go, I could go on forever about this because it's, it's engraved so deeply into me because it affected me so much. But I, I'm surviving <laughs> the body dysmorphia. Um, it might come back hard again if I go back into like a heavy phase. But since I've gone through it once already, I think I can make it out. <laughs> but um, yeah, that's all I've got. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, comments, or anything, go ahead and drop them down below. And I'll be doing a little bit more of this because I have, have a lot to say. So uh, thanks for watching. Bye, guys.